Hey everybody, welcome back to this unexpectedly interesting show where positivity is the number one thing that's being shared here. A lot of people can easily misinterpret whatever it is that we're talking about and for that reason I want to reinforce that the subject line of this video tells you what the video is somewhat about and interwoven into those words are also thoughts that have to do with what you might or might not search for when you go out of your way to find this type of content. If you're finding this content just because you're curious about the person that's telling the message, well, I I don't want to say that I hope that you're not disappointed because if you're just looking up this video because you know me and you're not putting any time or effort into the actual message that you're watching, well then you're just kind of looking for things to possibly, I don't know, critique. Like for an example, I am very profound at critiquing other people's work. Profound might not be the right word. I am very proficient at critiquing other people's work. That's because, well, I expect my work to be performed at a certain level. I value the investment that I am putting in, in terms of time, effort, money, Speaking of money, I recently opened some gifts that I received during the last holiday season, and I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for everyone who has been sending positivity my way, and also for people who have been sending gifts in the form of paper currency. The thought is well received and also my worldly debt is much appreciative of these energies that we're putting back into the system instead of just being outstanding, having outstanding debt. So thank you very much for helping me to achieve. I'm passing by a pretty good bloom of blue bonnets right now. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not seeing the plastic and the lack of insects and the plastic and more plastic and paper towels and napkins. What that means is we are probably on the cusp of our official spring here in the city that I live in, San Antonio. Today I'm driving to another location to visit the Guadalupe River State Park. And I wouldn't be able to do these things if I was unable to maintain and pay for the maintenance of those things that allow me to do these tasks. So why am I on this channel? Why, why am I and by that I mean you. Why are you, you might be asking yourself, why am I ask, Why am I on this channel? And why is this guy asking himself like as if he is me? Well, for all of the things that we do, it takes one to know one. So I need to know my audience in order to have a conversation with them. In my audience, I feel that there are some entities who might miss the message, which is why I reference the title of this message, the title of this video, and the fact that I wanted to give a little bit more information about that. In this video, I'm going to touch on certain aspects that have to do with the topic of Lent. Lent is a period of time According to my nation's oftentimes celebrated segment of 
one perception of religion. It's a time to reflect on the resurrection, the life of, and even the birth of the bringer of peace. Now, I don't want to say the names right off the bat. I'm just going to use the terminology so that we can understand switching on my adaptive cruise control because the traffic is becoming a little bit interesting. So I'm going to let my, my vehicle do the calculations on that math while I'm able to continue to provide you with the knowledge that I'm providing you with right now. For those of you who are tuning in because you've actually done a search, yes, you're at the right channel. You're on the channel that shows, hey, a lot of us are struggling through a lot of different circumstances, health, uh, monetary troubles, and spiritual troubles, all kinds of troubles. A lot of us are struggling through those things. Now, the period of Lent in my nation has to do with foregoing certain things in exchange for certain other things. Like for an example, if we're well off in terms of how much food we've been eating, we might want to be sharing that food with someone else. If we're not sharing our experience with someone else, even if it's some, like in some cases, this is where the aspect of couples comes into play in the spiritual realm. If we're sharing these things with gratitude, if we're sharing meals with gratitude with one another, if we're sharing entertainment with gratitude with one another, if we're sharing the experience of life with one another, that's hard to overlook. Especially if you've got a, a great partner. I've often heard it said about a partner by another partner, they're the reason I stay young. They make me feel young, etc., and so forth. Now, the thing about this investment is that this is what we might know as a, it's a long-term investment, but it's also only long-term if you think about the span of one human lifetime. When you start thinking about terms such as eternity, well, the lifespan of one human lifetime and staying healthy for that period of time because of another individual might be a law of diminishing returns if and when that other person is no longer there to nurture us. In this nation, during the, during the pandemic, we had a lot of people who were married suddenly get divorced. They couldn't stand to be with that other person for that amount of time. Recently, one of my direct relatives told me they enjoy talking with me, but they can only talk with me for a specific amount of time. After that, they don't want to talk with me anymore. In my business, and this is my business, so if you've turned into this, if you tuned into this page, I hope that you're understanding that without your subscriptions, I'm basically unable to be monetized even in the minuscule amount that that might lead to if I was a monetized, if I had a monetized channel. Now I'm not doing this to sell it, but I do mention it because if you're watching this and you're interested in what's this guy saying, why is he talking about these topics? I hope that you click on subscribe. I hope you liked the video if you've heard anything in here that helps you to understand what it takes to rebuild your own wealth, your own health. So as I was talking about when it comes to what I'm doing, this is my business. I do business by explaining to people the importance of wildlife and nature. I talk about wellness and conservation on this channel because if we are not well, how can we tend to any of the life around us? 
And I've seen this happen over and over where people think that they're well, think that they're tending to someone, but really all they're doing is sending money to someone. Never once are they actually in continuous prayer, praying for the health of somebody. Never once will they hear when someone tells when someone tells them their, their tales of, of despair, of discomfort, disease. Never once will that other person actually take a legitimate moment to pray for the other sinners because we don't really take time to pray for our own selves. Prayer and fasting. What is prayer? In some segments, prayer is referred to as meditation. And in other segments, the word meditation is vilified as something that is against God. In some segments, the word yoga can talk literally about doing exercise. In some segments, the word yoga can vilify an entire population because they use the word yoga. Some people believe that it's a spiritual gateway to demonic activity to exercise and some people exercise their demons some people recognize that we were put on this planet possibly by choice probably so that we could interact with one another and almost definitely so that we could bring joy to one another for as long as we have that opportunity once again that's important what happens though in an era when people have forgotten to bring joy, how to bring joy to themselves? What happens, waving to the vultures, what happens in an era where we forget to recognize the wildlife around us, where we forget to see all of the debris laying on the, on the medians, laying in the trails, when we forget to represent the animals that we're supposed to be the steward of? What happens when we start to overlook our own children? Not too long ago, I was invited to celebrate Easter with family. And during this celebration, we had difficulties by we, I mean, there were difficulties for some people to actually hear the words of peace, the basic Our Father prayer that comes from the same book that references some of the topics that I was invited to go and celebrate. Not too terribly long before that, Or after and after I'd been invited to celebrate with family for a birthday during this period of time I also made reference to the words of peace of our father that started to drive certain people into a mood that was almost supernatural. So you're on this channel, you're like, this guy was talking about business, he's rambling about something, I don't know what he's talking about. Now he's talking about supernatural, supernatural things. He's saying words that are so evil, like yoga. And all the while, are you really my audience? If these are the things you're thinking, if you're part of my audience and you're hearing that I'm talking specifically to people who might not be getting the message that I'm talking about Lent, about recovery of health, about business and how this factors in, then go ahead and click off the channel, click the thumbs down, do whatever you need to do. But if you recognize that what I'm talking about is actually possible, spiritual battles are actually happening, as above, so below, However, we are seeing this earth 
there must be a war about to break out in heaven as well. So how does this tie to business? Well, in a lot of circumstances, when I get together with people and talk about thoughts, some people will tell me, you can't be telling, can't be talking about politics. Don't talk about politics. There's no politics in imagining a child caged away from their parents. Being punished for the sins, I guess, of our fathers. There's no politics in that. There's just thought. If I was a child, I would not want to be caged and separated from my family. So then we have to start thinking of passing all this plastic in the median. A lot of plastic. Mostly plastic bags that you would get from like convenience stores. So then I start thinking, well, what if I was an animal suddenly separated from my own, my own mother? Well, as a person, I never really felt that, so I can't experience it fully, but I can say that I've been separated from my father multiple times over. And in this process, it gave me a lot of question as to whether our father was able to hear my prayer anymore. I almost gave up. There were several times, and I just talked with a friend of mine yesterday, there were several times where I've placed my hands in the ocean, for an example, and received something as I was asking for it, just a sign. We have so many signs around us, synchronicities, as what would be referred as the New Age segment might put it. Synchronicities, signs from above, and yesterday, the person I was talking with also talked about positivity and how our positive view can change the outlook and the outcome of what's going to happen. So, synchronicity. A lot of times we'll think about something that happens and go, oh, it's a sign. But is it a good sign or a bad sign? When you are walking the path of peace, every sign is a positive sign. Even if something was negative. So going back to business. Last year, I had one opportunity to take someone on a journey to what might be described as some of our favorite habitat. And during that experience, we went without. We went without meat. Now, I know that's not a lot, but that was a lot for two people to be able to do together. Not everyone can go without anything. If you talk to somebody about going out, going without the morning, I'm just passing a mask right now, by the way, speaking of our, our pandemic, a mask was blowing in the grass. No butterflies yet, but there are spring flowers. So... As we become increasingly unable to give up the things that we do from the start of the day, like some of us from the start of the day will light up a cigarette. Some of us in the start of the day will grab coffee with some sweetener or another. And in a lot of cases, we model, a lot of cases we model these activities after something that we've seen in the past. Maybe our parents drank coffee. Maybe our parents smoked. Maybe had we never known that we were able to do that activity, we may never have become addicted to it. Maybe the addiction is a coping mechanism. But anyway, back to business. During this trip, I was able to go to, to well, to one of my one of our favorite habitats. We were able to see some things that not everyone would be able to see. We were fortunate. The weather was amazing. We went without. We had nonstop conversation, 
And during that opportunity, I was offered and I received, thankfully, paper currency. In that paper currency was my thank you for being able to be the driver, provide all of the wear and tear on my vehicle, including the tires that I normally would replace annually as they became worn down from all of that off-roading. And I took that money and I thought I should, I should do something good with this. You know, maybe not get tires for myself. Maybe I should do something good with this. But I held on to it for a while just like the cards that I opened recently that had money inside, I held on to it for a while because that's not what I'd been praying for. And sometimes if you put your hands into the ocean and pray for a piece of jewelry and you receive broken pieces over and over, sometimes if you stop picking up the broken pieces, sometimes something more amazing will fall right into your hands. In a lot of cases, we are a broken society. We've all been broken in so many ways. We've been broken because we have all of the rates of divorce that we have. We have all of the rates of opportunity for new relationships that we have. We have all of these things that we don't really think about as the primary um, reason that we would normally have thought about them in the future. Like for an example, we may not think about raising children with one another. We may only think about, well, this brings me the benefit of being able to watch movies, uh, you know, have a physical relationship with and um, go to appointments with this person. This person gives me these opportunities. We may never think that when we were put into place, according to these books of peace, where Lent allows you the opportunity to go without certain things so that you can see, you know, what is it like to live without the addiction of coffee, smoking, um, anything, sex? What is it like to go without these addictions? call them addictions because most of us aren't grateful. We're not grateful enough to pray and give thanks for something. We're not even grateful enough to pray for the well-being of the children locked in cages, separated from their family, or just plain suffering from some kind of spiritual battles that do occur when we talk about these things. So I talk about these things during business. The person I traveled with had a had an amazing experience. They were so joyful. I've never seen such a gorgeous smile. And during that time frame, I guess we were friends. As we continued to communicate later, I'm passing a lot of plastic and rubbish, cardboard, boxes, more boxes, plastic, convenience store bags. As we continued to talk about these things, I was reminded over and over by this person that they were a subscriber to a group, a club. And that club sent out publications regularly, stapled publications regularly, talking about all the tireless work that they're doing to clean up these circumstances, the trash that I'm seeing, to clean up these circumstances that are impacting our environment. They were doing so much. And I started noticing that a lot of the trash is also paper. These publications sometimes even happen to be the intrusion in the areas that they're claiming to clean up. All of the people who are doing these tasks are probably, I'm passing a lot of little goats, they're cute, probably practice rituals, mixing the coffee every morning, consuming every morning, every morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, or morning. We 
practice certain things every morning, but when do we practice going without? This video is about Lent. If you found yourself watching this video and trying to find a car, some kind of a comment to express an idea about, like if you heard one line from this whole thing and decided to make a comment, go ahead and don't make that comment. Uncomment, delete it. Circle back and go, how does this apply to myself? How does Lent apply to me? Does it apply to me? Well, depending on which books of peace we decided to reference when we all pledged allegiance to whatever nation we pledged allegiance to, there might be a process where our very paper currency says, in God we trust. And if that's true, then we might have to have a little bit of a stronger belief in that God in order to trust that when we put our hands into the ocean and we ask for a sign that we can share with our fathers so that we can rebuild our communications, when we ask for those things, if we have just a little bit more belief, if we've gone without so that we can help others with that abundance that we have, then, and only then, can some of us move past the stubborn excess weight. Weight can be weight like a wait time. Excess weight. Weight can be weight like actual weight that we carry. And as we think about carrying weight, if we ever once gave thought to this story that someone was scourged, practically starved, and carried a cross, carried their own cross that they would be crucified to death on, then we are giving attention to a subject that most of us will turn our back on without any second thought, just like the dying wildlife around us, just like the, the children separated from their families. We won't give a thought to them. We'll even let other people torment. Torment those people. Because that's not our problem. We don't want to get involved. All of these, there's red solo cups now paper towels, plastic, shredded plastic bags. I was looking up at two flying vultures a while ago as well. There's another one up ahead flying. And I'm headed to my, one of my favorite places as well to talk about these topics. Anyway, as I was talking about this topic, more and more there were questions coming in from, from the person I was with. They even went so far as to say, well, you know, we believe in a different God. On one day while we were out there, we prayed on top of a gigantic rock, an uplift. We prayed on top of an uplift in the middle of the desert before we had our small breakfast which consisted of fruit and nuts, things that the wildlife would eat. We prayed, and a dust devil came from all the way across the desert to pass over us as we were finishing our prayer. Synchronicity, sign from God, not sure what you want to call it, but I want to call it absolute confirmation that God was listening. God is listening. Sometimes we have to recognize when it's time to help ourselves. If we cannot help ourselves, we will never be able to help others. And for many of the people who 
I talked with these, talked about these topics with, I continue to get weird messages. You need to go to the doctor. You, you can only get peace, mental peace from therapy. Passing a lot of boxes, more plastic, egg carton, red plastic wrapper. You can only, you, uh, probably a car struck fawn, deer. You can only get pa you can only get peace by looking outward to a doctor. You can only become healthy by you know going to therapy to talk talk your problem through with. What if my problem is that my own father can only speak with me for a short amount of time? Because talking about this topic puts him on the defensive. What if I've been separated from my family over the concept of words more than actually having been separated by anger of my, on my side anyway, uh, lack of forgiveness or hostility. I'm not a hostile person. That doesn't mean that I will not defend myself. In fact, recently I had some circumstances where people kept saying things that led me to believe that they weren't helping a conversation to go any further. They just continued to allow the wheels to spin, watching me in distress without helping. Now these, these individuals have heard my conversation since then. And so I've got to say again, thank you so much for sticking it out, for understanding, for trying. All I have to say in this particular segment is that we may not be able to understand one another because the language I speak peace cannot be translated by a vicious mindset. The vicious mindset might only be able to look for the quirks, for the things to judge, for the reasons to comment, to turn the story back about ourselves and make it about ourselves. When in fact, this story has nothing to do with me really, even though it's YouTube and I'm telling my story this story is probably everyone's story. Everyone who is experiencing difficulties in any format probably could use a little bit more peace. If I were to tell you over and over, hey, fasting and prayer brings peace. If I were to tell you with certainty, you may scoff, you may mock me, you may tell me that you need nutrients you may tell me that I'm not carrying enough calories on me already, that my body is not smart enough to rebuild using the pieces it was given, that I am not smart enough to have processed any of the things that I've learned and I've learned from experience. You may tell me over and over why you can only hear me for so long. And then you might get so mad that I refund your money because I feel bad. How could you possibly hate me enough to not talk with me, but you loved me enough to take you on a journey? If you hate me now, you hated me then, and so I have to refund your money. We didn't do good business. I didn't carry across what I was tasked to carry across, a, mess a message of peace. For that reason, I have to learn different ways to communicate with the masses and anyone here who keeps providing their two cents in the comments and the comments, the two cents doesn't even apply anymore. Like let's say that currency is already, it's got dead presidents on it. It doesn't even say in God we trust on those two cents. 
If we're providing our two cents and it's just weighting the other person down, we have to recognize we shouldn't have commented. We have to recognize who is this message for? Who is it against? It's not against anybody. It's simply telling a story about sharing energy properly and about reinforcing one another's positive health without intruding over and over on the mission that that person has. These intrusions are distractions. They cause delays in work. This, this, this person I was talking with yesterday, I also talked with them about this guitar that I had. It's been, it had been getting worked on for over a year. I got it two Thanksgivings ago before Thanksgiving. I received it in the mail, damaged. I took it in for repair. And two Thanksgiving later, two Thanksgivings later, and on the final day of February, actually yesterday, I finally got this guitar back. I had to, I had to prompt the person to continue the work on it, to ask peacefully, Anyway, the work got done, that blockage was released, and hopefully you're able to release some blockages by considering fasting, prayer and fasting. If you've never considered it, let me tell you, it's easy to go half a day without eating food, only drinking water. There's a dead squirrel in the park road where the park speed limit is 20 miles an hour. Someone had to have seen that animal crossing if they were paying attention, but they didn't. I wonder why. Anyway, overall, I hope you got the message of, of intent, which is that fasting and prayer are a surefire way to break the demonic holds and the spells and uh, to free up some time. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Peace, love, and all that old school stuff.